Okay, thanks for still being there, still summit, and now we're talking about uh, Buhari's directive on resignations and uh, appointees weighing their options. And we have Mr. Bolaba joining us for this discussion. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity once again. Good morning. All right, so, well, uh, the president of Nigeria uh, last week uh, has re instructed that uh, before the May 16th, uh, he orders ministers seeking elective positions who are in office to actually resign. And today is the 16th of May. We have some of them who, someone resigned before the directive, and then after the directive, we have a few who resigned. But we still have some who are there who have not resigned. Um, well, they had to wait to get that directive before they even took a step to resign. But as an overview, what's your thought on this? My thought is not different from uh, anything that one often gets to be pushed to say about Mr. Muhammad Buhari. He is a prevaricator in chief. He does not seem to understand his right hand from his left hand. Really? That's our president. To, 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 to the unfortunate, unfortunate history of Nigeria. He is. He should not be very kind to him. I, I think it's about time now uh, that uh, we start telling him the truth. He still will not be very kind to him. Is the of of Kusketon in general of Nigeria. The press, the, the constitution gives you the prerogative to hire and fire, not to negotiate whether you will hire or you will fire. The constitution really gives him the, the prerogative. And here is a man who has defined the vision, or ordinarily ought to have defined the vision to the nation. And within the context of the machinery, the human capital machinery you, you built to deliver that vision, some elements, and we must respect natural justice, with wanting or believing that they can do it better than you decided while still in office to indicate interest by committing money. They are paid. Indicate interest by committing money to want to succeed you. That ordinarily should have been a subject of distraction. If you if you are a go getting some of us have built enterprises now. You know, inevitably there will be distractions. You kept mom. The situation was that so undefined until a court. A court did not only pronounce, the federal court did not only pronounce that what was happening, maybe the provision of of the law that was in subject may not be consistent with the constitution and until the court of appeal made its own ambiguous pronouncement that was when you instructed your chief of staff to write the, the, uh, the memo when they got the memo you also spoke in council to the Invulnerability and the immutability of that of the content of that memo. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria spoke in council, recorded on tape. Nigerians watched. Two, uh, three or four days after, the Monday after, you conducted a valedictory meeting. Conducted a valedictory meeting with the ministers your, your ministers information in London addressing international press spoke to the immutability of the pronouncement of the, of the president 
your spokespersons spoke to the immutability of the pronouncement of the president and suddenly and in Gigi a Malami and a Pabio rubbished the pronouncement but we are not shocked anymore how many times has the president of Nigeria charged our armed forces and the 27 ministries, departments and agencies functioning pertaining to, to security. Not only the ones defined by the Constitution, not only the three armed services and the police, but we have 27 MDAs, ministries, departments and agencies that are directly controlled by this man and yet human beings are picked like glitters in nigeria and nothing the gentleman who left here even gave you a very graphical illustration of the vacuity the ornament of presidential directive february president of a country since february instructed that something be done and those who did not have some of those who did not have the time to do that thing I've gotten enough time, my sister, to go and pick forms and pay at least two. We know him, Gigi. We know the former minister of former minister of state education. Abi. He tells you that this man, we have a comedian in chief. I'm telling you, with due respect. And it's ironic that the world now is seeing a comedian holding and running the Hallowed office of a president of a nation under siege, well enough, and a retired general. Now let's look at the deadline is today. That's uh, May sixteenth. Uh, uh, we still have uh, the AGF that uh, uh, Baka Malami still weigh his options. He said um, he remains in office, but uh, no one is sure, even as we speak whether he has dropped his gubernatorial ambition or not. You know, now, you know what happened today? Reported by major newspapers, we should be a slap, a slap on the integrity of the president is that Malami has reported by major newspapers today has approached the Supreme Court for interpretation of Section 84, subsection 12 of the Estant Electoral Act. You know what that says? Now, they are earlier denied that they did not know anything about the machinations from Abia that went in the direction of the Court of Appeal. The constitutional right that only Malami and the other 36 attorney generals have regarding directly approaching the Supreme Court for interpretation, Malami is now articulating that constitution right now because of his own personal ambition. And you say I have a president who defines who defines his title in such a manner that those around you just act as though they have no head. They're not working to a concerted vision, mission, and strategy. Is that how we define? No, the, 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 the learned seat that's uh, Femi Falano, SN, has actually declared the withdrawal of uh, Chris Inge, that's uh, Dr. Chris Inge, from the race as illegal, having reserving, uh, 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 submitted. submitted his form. Now he's saying that he's withdrawing. He's saying that. The learned six said it's, it's an illegal decision. But of course, it's being controverted by the by Doctor Gilgit that he never submitted his form. What do you make of all of this? I was interviewed virtually by a radio station this morning, and I asked the the journalist that asked me a similar question, which more which one is far, far more 
irritating. The vacuity of the pronouncements of the president or the, the jurisprudential interpretation of a provision by, by a senior advocate. Which one? Which one? Look, Falano is a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He has his opinion. His opinion is not the pronouncement of court. And we know, as the dictum says, that the law is what the court says the law is. Not the, they didn't say the law is what Falano says the law is. So I'm sitting here now believing that that question is a superfluous. The fundamental issue is that the President of the Federal, Federal Republic of Nigeria on his behalf, his Chief of Staff issued a memo. Personally, this is a very taciturn character who seldom speaks, but found the occasion to speak to a subject and is pronouncement on that occasion gave a concise impression that the content of the memo must be followed. He even instructed a valedictory meeting with the characters and he was seen posing in, in, in pictures in any other polity where the dignity of that office is functionally and organically respected. We, we should be using where was a minister for the Ngegeza Malamis of this world. But you know what? We have a president whose pronouncements are so old. What, 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 is, what do you think are the reasons behind this degradation? For of that, that office uh, your, or your, for that office for your, your use of language now is fantastic on that that word degradation when something has been so devalued you know has been so functionally operationally devalued the job president of nigeria functioning as a de facto lilliput even governors in Nigeria now are seen to be far more assertive than this president. You know what? I, oh, I may have made a joke before here yeah, on, on this platform. You know, I, I, I used to say, and I still say, that you see, if the governor of Lagos State makes me a promise, and if Elsie uh, Obama makes me a, a promise, because I know Lagos is a hypocrisy, I will believe Elsie Obama, because no ambassador wants Washington. You understand? It's the case in Nigeria that. Let me think of a governor. Governor of uh, UB State. If he makes me a promise, I will believe him far more. Unless. Far more than the president. We do. So, sorry. One has to be circumspect because you people have uh, a show to run. We are praying within the laws. But to be honest with you, it is so viscerally. It, it, it's so painful when one thinks about the degradation that has befallen an otherwise hallowed office. And we are not, we, this is not my personal opinion here. We are just opposing expressly defined provisions and powers. Of, of an office relative to the slapstick, wishy-washy, sloppy conduct of an occupant. Now let's go back to the Electoral Act, which uh, actually stipulated these conditions for serving officers, appointees, and all that. This was the same Electoral Act that uh, lots, many Nigerians <laughs> agitated yes. for, that once it's operational, that uh, the election 2023 election will be much better than the previous ones, and that so many of our national issues will be resolved. 
What can you say of these operations or the effectiveness of this electoral? I, I think, with due respect, I was one of those who agitated for the electoral act. But many of us agitated from the from the perspective of the employment of technology in the processes of election. Because we have, oh, look, Michael Jackson used to vote in Nigeria. Abiyo Mokoma, Michael Jackson used to vote in Nigeria. You want me to go and give, get you four, five electoral circles back uh, on those state electoral roll. You will see Michael Jackson, uh, all the, this, they voted. Because in those days, technology was not used. But when technology was employed, you must remember that on one occasion, the Supreme Court of Nigeria pronounced that Orisha Gwobasonjo got more votes in Ogun State than the total number of registered voters in, in, in Ogun State. And suddenly, from the moment PVC was introduced, from the moment PVC was introduced, never has any polling booth registered the fullness of the number of voters on the roll. Because technology leaves a chain. And you know what they kept doing? They would de deliberately, they would deliberately, operationally mess up that thing. And they would say they are using. So we agitated for the fulsome engagement of technology. Now, the gatekeepers, the legislators, in, they didn't want to do it. Even the president, it was on the seventh occasion that he signed the Electoral Act. But having said that, the gatekeepers too, whilst they were conceding to the general to the pressure of the general public, they took the pain to to also well, they also took the advantage to see that those who are in the executive arm of government because they have the privilege of playing around with the treasury. And if we cannot get the principals, that's the, the principals in the president and the vice president and the, the governor and the deputy governor, but the, the people that the governors have, they usually anoint. Let's mess up this thing for them. Let me be very fair and honest with you. And one who believes that that provision is extra constitutional is a bit too, it is, is an imputation to protect the, self, the political selfish interest of the legislators. But having said that, he signed it. Although they said they reached some agreement, and that was why I was telling some people a couple of days ago in the podcast I, you know, I do every day, that this, this seemingly surprising National Assembly, when it comes to self gratification, they get the president to work their, to, to work their side. The president, maybe because they have been over subservient, obsequious, or whatever, they just get him to do what, what they want, want him to do. So, sitting here now, we must remove the improvement we believe that the electoral act, this extant electoral act, the amended and extant electoral act, will do to our elections in 2023. We must separate it from the provision that is in question. Because the provision that is in question, the beautiful part of it is that when the president reached that gentleman's agreement with the legislators and they failed to honor the gentleman's agreement, if Malani had gone to the Supreme Court to do what he's now belatedly doing as a result of the fact that the security of his British quick office is is in but this was a man who was who was bragging that they gave out 300 Mercedes Benz vehicles in Kebu. Gave out 300 Mercedes Benz vehicles and was saying in Aosa that you know uh, Allah winning they would give out aeroplanes if they if, if they if, if they had this thing. So it's the spending apart from the forty million. So what does that suggest about the genuineness uh, of the desire to govern or to decide over this country by those who have thrown in their caps into the ring? 
Now, I mean, for if anybody could spend that much and the, in the trick of an eye overnight decides to withdraw from the race, or is still weighing options whether he should stay in his uh, current office or go ahead. What does contest. it suggest? What, what does, does it suggest about the, the genuine desire what does to it change suggest the to course you? of the What does it suggest to you when the total emolument of the Nigerian president for four years, one term of presidency, is just barely around 100 million and we are telling in a, in a very is 56 million uh, in, a, in a very plutocratic manner let's even say it's 50 let's say it's 100 million they say the money you will take for four years they say you should use a fourth of it to go and collect from is that not plutocracy and in that in an environment like this what does that kind of plutocratic uh, this thing speak to it speaks to you know we are now in a kleptocracy, classic kleptocracy. Then they will I will put that kind of money down for charity. And you know what? What 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 has been the total emolument of Ngige since he has been minister? All the minister of state. Where where did the minister of state get the hundred million? Oh, the contributor do for him to. They have groups now contributing to groups. So oh, fantastical, <laughs> fantastical. All right, thank you so much, sir. That's thank you very much, my sister, and my brother. We us. just pray that uh, um, we pray that this Nada too has reached its bottom because we keep sinking, hmm. and it's seeming like an endless abyss. It's unfortunate. Thank you so much, sir. We can't goodness. thank you enough, sir, for your time and your thoughts on the program. Always very frank. And we then the two discussions today have been so emotional, you know. But well, we meet Nigeria. It's not about emotions in Nigeria, yeah, if yeah. you're watching. It's about, you know, when you, when you feel emotional, the best thing to do after emotions will be sit down and take rational decisions and follow it up. Because I'm talking about biology, you have to speak to you outside and speak to you. Thank you. All right, that's our program today. My name is Jumoke Michaels. We'll see you again on Wednesday for another edition of the program. Enjoy the remaining uh, the remaining time of the day. Bye bye. Have a very productive week. My name is Banji Busari. Bye bye. <laughs>